Hey guys, welcome to NFTX's 16th governance call. We host this every Wednesday at 16 p.m. UTC. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about what has been going on recently, or if you have any questions, then I think this is the best place to be. Uh, I've been away, uh, like on some like personal issues recently, but yeah, I'm back for business or back <laughs> in business. And yeah, um, there will be an open floor at the end of the call. So if anyone would like to talk about some specific things at that time, please raise your hand and mention them. Uh, that way, like we can just think about it a bit more and like get some more productive discussion than just raising something and giving your first thoughts. And uh, Chop Lo Chop Chop is currently away. So Javery is going to be covering this week's uh, in review. And uh, Alex, you have some like intro words? Yep. Um, nothing, nothing particular, but yeah, drops away this week and we've been really busy uh, preparing for the code review, which I thought was starting yesterday, but apparently it's starting today. And um, yeah, pushing a lot of stuff on the front end and um, just uh, been a pretty cool week with the MeBits drop. Definitely got distracted by that for at least 24 hours. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about the MeBits at the end, but it's a, it was quite a surprise for some people. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, if Javery wants to just uh, go over, we can review. That's probably that's probably yep. we're probably going to keep it pretty short today. I think. Yep. Javery, are you ready? Yeah. All good. Perfect. Uh, so each week we send out a uh, well, we do a blog post about the week in review to look back on uh, any of the developments that have happened on the platform and what's happening in the NFT space as well. Um, this week we looked at uh, there were some issues around the kitty uh, request mint. Um, you weren't able to request because of the way that kitties work. Uh, you, they uh, sit on an eligibility list, so you need to make a request to put your kitty into the fund. Uh, and there was an issue with the request there. Um, we also found that there was an issue with the subgraph uh, that was allowing the kitties to display in the new app as well. Uh, so thank you to the community members who raised that and flagged that with us. Um, those have been uh, worked through now. Uh, one of the issues was that because the some of the older NFTs like kitties and axes don't adhere exactly to the 721 standard. So there are some um, outlying issues that we have to fix up whenever we come across these things. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was flagged and has been fixed and uh, getting pushed up now as well. Um, the dev team worked on uh, vault creation and vault management this week. Um, that is very close to being pushed, uh, like very, very, very close. Um, and with the new uh, UI that we've got, we've seen there's a lot more action than we've seen in the past around the minting and redeeming um, of all of the different tokens or all the different NFTs uh, across the different pools uh, and vaults as well. Um, so we've got some. Uh, we're in the final beta testing of the app uh, for the Create Vault stuff, and yeah, we should see a push of that soon. Um, and then the other bit we looked at was the V2 uh, contract testing. So in a little over eight hours, uh, a competition's opening up over on Code Arena, um, where there's prizes to go through and review the code uh, that's been worked on. Uh, once it goes through that review. Uh, it'll come back across and then any bugs that need to be fixed can be fixed and then we can kind of push ahead with uh, the V2. Uh, the other bits were more around uh, action in the NFT space. So like you said, we saw the MeBit stuff uh, get dropped. Um, and also another big one that was, uh, that it seemed like, it seems like it happened ages ago now because MeBits came shortly <laughs> afterwards. But also the, uh, the Board Ape Yacht Club uh, came in as well. Um, both of those projects now have uh, vaults over on um, on NFTX, which is great, um, and set up by community members as well, which is uh, which is quite cool. Uh, but instead of going into that finesse, you want to leave that to have a bigger discussion around that later on. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you pretty much covered everything that's been going on uh, the past week. And yeah, like uh, Alex said, Code Arena is like pretty much in the, the in the go right now. So like anything that is of concern to us is just NFT news right now. So MeBits mm -hmm. and Board Ape Yacht Club. Yeah. And smaller um, drops, obviously, but those are the two main concerns right now. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I'm happy to like talk a little bit um, quickly about like uh, the airdrops and stuff, and basically what we were talking about before. Is that a, is yep. now a good time? Yep. I, I just want to like preface by saying so uh, if people weren't aware, um, me bits dropped, and like there's about ten thousand that you could purchase, and then the other ten thousand were for current like punk or glyph owners, and they are able or were able to mint them uh, for free, like just paying gas pretty much. Mm -hmm. So because NFTX like has a lot of punks, um, in theory, we should have been able to like mint Mebits and then either distribute them or keep them for the DAO, uh, like whatever, like the community would have voted. And because of the way like things are structured, we weren't able to do that. And Alex can give you guys more detail about that. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, you know, it's, um, I think it was like an interesting experiment sort of that happened and like we're going to be seeing more of this happening in the future with airdrops and stuff. Um, so it, it's a tough call and like whether or not, like I'm actually kind of of the opinion that, um, you know, like I don't know if, if we, if our vaults or like our DAO really should be using those assets to, to like get in on drops. Um, I do think it's going to be pretty hard to like beat out the bots. Um, and that it's almost it's almost better if we can just work it into our like into our revenue model and our turnover model. Uh, so like basically in the future, like with V2, um, what's going to be attracting people to be inventory providers or, the, or to stake their SLPs um, will be fees and you know fees that they earn, um, and that. The more turnover that happens, the more fees they'll actually earn. And like in a day, like with the MeBits drop, you basically get 100% plus turnover in a single day, um, which can be a lot of fees. Um, so like, you know, let's say like a third of those were random redemptions and then two thirds were like targeted redemptions. Uh, basically, those inventory providers would be like would be making a large amount of money on that on that turnover in that single day. So. I'm inclined to think that that's the best way to just to work with it um, and to just like build it into our revenue model, basically, um, because it's going to be it's going to be hard and and slightly controversial for us to be building in things to our smart contracts to let us like beat out um, the you know the mercenaries in the space. Uh, but but yeah, it was an interesting, definitely interesting to see that happen um, and to see people like you know kind of figuring out that they could loop through our vaults um, and in the future with flash mints or in like it'll be even easier right because you'll be able to flash loan yourself vault tokens um, so again yeah i think it's really just about building it into the revenue model um because it would be hard to predict this but that's just my two cents it's definitely something we can talk about more on the forums yeah i mean my my point of view isn't like concrete at all i just think like this is a space where no one or i mean not everyone can be happy so it's like there's always some compromise here and there and like as you said if you're like making revenue as an lp then is it's not that bad if you're losing out on a different opportunity it just depends like what your objectives and your goals are like as long as everything is transparent and like you're aware then you can make informed choices but like as you said like this kind of an experiment like it was such a surprise drop that no one expected like you can't mm -hmm. beat bots in a drop like this yeah exactly it's gonna be it's gonna be really tough um but but yeah i think if if you know as long as like vault token or like inventory providers can profit off it in some way it just it's still like you know the incentives get aligned uh but yeah it, it'll be interesting to see this happen i think it's going to be a more of a common occurrence that people will be doing targeted drops to certain nft like collectors um so yeah, it could be a really good boon for NFTX and a great way for us to kind of increase turnover. Personally, uh, I'll go ahead, Javier, then let, let you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, personally, like I've been waiting for this for a long time because that's kind of what happened in DeFi. Like specific, like either voters or holders were like rewarded and it hasn't really happened yet in the NFT space. And I was very surprised. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's cool to see that happening. Uh, Jamie, what did you want to say? Yeah, I was going to say, I think it works uh, both ways. So the the advantages that Alex talked about for for looping through and anyone at LP and gets gets the transaction funds as well. But if we if we work closely, or if someone chooses to use NFTX as a um, as a launch pad as well, 
it's it's up to the the owner of that nft project to if they if they want to release like something and do an airdrop they can approach us directly and say look we, we launched with you we want to reward all the token holders at the moment can we take a snapshot at this point and then we're going to announce mm-hmm. it and then allocate all those things that we're going to airdrop to those token holders at that point so that way when they do release if people want to come in and bots want to come in all of those things have already been issued mm-hmm. and that's that's the choice of the of the project owner and i think that's that's where it should sit yeah i think and i think we'll definitely see some projects actually um like looking to reward liquidity providers um specifically because they want to improve liquidity right um so yeah i'm hoping that that we do see that happen i i think for any uh like vault that's going to grow a lot it would make sense like it's 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 kind of a no-brainer if you're launching something and there's already a community you can like bootstrap yourself with that community if it makes sense Mm -hmm. Uh, like if the incentives are aligned so yeah if we have a system where like people make or like profit off turnover and this increases turnover then it's not necessarily a negative so yeah it's but as, as Javery said like i think what we have to chase or not necessarily us but like as a nft community is that people think of all the participants and not just one uh if it's a it's a project where the participants are divided into like different subsections like for example like if you were part of the hash mass community there are some people who are only NCT like holders or speculators, and there are some people who have plenty of hash mass. Some people who have the uh, like hash mass index token. So yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I think I think we're basically all on the same page about that. Yep. Um, I think cool. That also covers pretty much everything. Unless Jerry, you had some more to say about the uh, uh, Board Ape Yacht Club. Uh, no, so I got two uh, two bits um, that I want to cover. Uh, one is just Nick's update for the development, um, which is coming up at the moment. Um, I hinted on this before, but the create managed vault stuff is is pretty much going to get pushed today, uh, which would be great for anyone looking to uh, create or manage their vaults uh, in the new UI. Um, also, we had a we found a uh, a bug when whales connect to to the minter. So Pranksy connected and has over six thousand. Uh, NFTs, uh, which made the the app a little bit slow, um, which led us to fix a graph issue um, and just improve the overall layout and performance of the app as well. So this sort of stuff happening is uh, is a really good thing. Um, after the uh, create manage vault is pushed, we're uh, turning our eyes to the NFTX uh, website itself. So the the main landing page, the marketing site, um, and we're looking to to get that sorted this week. And then it'll be full steam ahead on uh, the V2 stuff as well. So that's the cool. that's the development update. And then um, I know uh, uh, Aito keeps dropping in and out. He can't get his sound to work. Um, but oh. they put a, a note up on the general chat just around uh, a proposal to to look at uh, Mebits and to see if NF- NFTX can provide. Uh, the community to to put a vote through for NFTX to provide liquidity for the Mebit pool. Oh, okay. But um, um, yeah, um, yeah, we can definitely talk about that on the forum. Yeah. So I, I said to him, the next steps will be like if if he can't uh, be in here uh, to chat about it, is to to move it to the forum to have a chat about it. Yeah, no, I think the forum is probably the best place for that um, to talk about like any sort of governance proposal like that. Even if it's not a direct proposal, like j- the forum is made to discuss things, and after that, like we make proposals. You don't like no one should be afraid to start like any subject that they consider like of value to NFTX on the forum. Totally. So yeah, Ado, if you can hear me, like just post your thoughts on the forum directly. It's a it's a better like platform than Discord. Like things will get lost in Discord over time. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's quiet. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I, I think it was just my mic. Um, oh, I'm not sure what okay. we're talking about now, but is it is it open forum time? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, I guess uh, what what we were discussing in the Discord was basically, well, we we wanted to create like a Mebits vault right away after mm-hmm. Mebits launched. Um, and like, 
you know, just looking at um, Muse and like their their general response to uh, like new NFTs launching and, and the speed at which they respond to creating the vaults. Um, mm -hmm. I think NF like NFTX can definitely do that a lot a lot faster. Um, and like more more broadly, having like like a market squad or something similar to Product Squad, where like just people are staying on top of the trends in uh, NFTs and like what's hot. Um, helping facilitate creation of, of vaults, um, working with like Maki and Sushi to seed or like to, to get onsen onto the good ones. I think I think that would be super useful and, and valuable for uh, continuing to spread the word. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's definitely something I know Nick keeps on saying that like we're he'd like us to hire more for marketing. Um, we're also like kind of in an awkward point right now because we're about to launch version two. So like, mm. for example, I have uh, a bunch of me bits that like I haven't really bothered minting. Um, and I know like a number of other like really big me bit whales or have a bunch of liquidity that they're waiting for version two. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I think, you know, um, the short, the try, trying to, you know, win, create a moat by being first to create pools will be will be tough. It's a really hard thing to scale, um, which is why with version two, we're like building in bootstrapper, uh, this idea of like a bootstrapper incentive so that mm -hmm. basically people are incentivized to be the first to create a vault on NFTX. Um, and, you know, they, they'll even to a certain extent be incentivized to go and take liquidity from other protocols and put it on to NFTX so that they can get that bootstrapper incentive long term. Um, I definitely, yeah, I definitely know what you mean. I was, I was feeling the same for a long time, like felt like, um, you know, we weren't being fast enough and we got it, we got to respond quicker. And it was basically Scott who's kind of, uh, um, you know, convinced me that that's not a scalable approach and that, you know, these incentives have to get built into the protocol itself. Um, and so like, that's kind of what we're focusing on doing now. And then also focusing on having like a really, um, easy to use front end um, because ultimately the number of redemptions will drive fees and the fees will drive liquidity providers and you know and also drive this incentive to take liquidity from other protocols um, mm -hmm. so so I, I totally know what you mean um, and like I, I'm, I think in a month um, things will be looking a lot different yeah and also just to add like one one last point it's that Chop isn't here, and he has the best like relations with the sushi people, and also like I haven't been here recently, and like I was one of the people who was just looking for new projects that could be valuable to add. So it's it's like a combination of many factors, like absences plus the fact that V two is so close that it's just not our priority right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, thanks, thanks, thanks for that context. Is there a um the the bootstrapping sounds like a really really great incentive mechanism is there a route to uh, like a default pool um like a AM, amm protocol so i know we use sushi for everything but do mm -hmm. we have like like once you create the vault you still have to have someone see the liquidity right um yeah totally so, so i think yeah. i think like what we're going to do first um is kind of do the bootstrapping incentives like calculate them off chain basically and do them retroactively um, so we'll figure, we'll have like some sort of period. So like, you know, like six months or so. Um, and anybody who, you know, has their liquidity staked, their, their SLP staked during that six month period will be eligible for these long-term um, rewards. And then hopefully we can actually build that into the smart contracts eventually. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we'll go with Sushi pretty much. That would be the default um, AMM for now, yeah. So like a like a short term like three to six month um, farming incentive for staking um, like new pools or, or any pools. Yeah, um, it well it won't even be farming so much necessarily. It'll actually be fees. Um, so like they'll the fees will come from the redemptions and in particular the targeted redemptions. So like mm. we've worked some models and like you know we think if um, if vaults can get like two percent turnover per day. Uh, for targeted redemptions, then that should oh. give the inventory providers like 30% plus APR each year. Um, yeah. So it's like, and then, yeah, the bootstrappers would get like a portion of those long-term fees. Um, and we can always add farming rewards on top of that, but it is important that we like, we try and 
you know, design a system that is uh, self-sufficient, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it, it's the same thing as like what we said before about um, like adding new projects quickly, not being scalable. What you have to aim for is a system that makes sense and that people want to use regardless of uh, other rewards. So yeah, imagine definitely. if you have a system that works perfectly and then you add farming rewards for the people that are just not aware. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Um, are, are the fees split between the, the, the inventory pro providers or also like NFTX like tokens? Yeah, so it'll, it'll be split between the NFTX DAO okay, okay. and the inventory providers. Um, and then, so like some pools won't won't be eligible for the bootstrapper incentives. It, it'll, right, I think right. we'll kind of decide um, and like we'll definitely want those more so um, for pools that we're competing more on. Um, yep. But yeah, Thanks. no, we're, yeah, we're definitely, we're definitely want to get more competitive on that front. I think it's just about getting all of our uh, ducks in a row and getting V2, you know, ready. Yeah. And then um, one, one other question, like we, we talked to Kiwi a, a bit about this in the discord, but there is that like kind of pseudo random uh, redemption where you can basically script uh, mm -hmm. targeted redemptions right now without, without going through the actual like feature. Yeah. Is that going to be fixed with a V2 or? Yeah. So at first, I think we're just going to make the random. We're going to make the randomness harder to um, to kind of yeah find loopholes. But then as a 2.x upgrade, we'll definitely be integrating Chainlink um, like verifiable randomness. Okay. okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then last last question. So I know like like the DAO has a bunch of like me bits and, and other and like inventory. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a path to like, I guess, proposing in like a faster way? Like, let's say Mebit's launched, can we can we just get the DAO to like scramble some some like some Mebits and then and seed an initial pool like right away? Um, I, I we yeah we can try again. I think I think we're better off with the bootstrapper incentives and then having like basically mercenaries um, fight to be the first okay. to do that. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's. How about um, just yeah. just being being just like more efficient with with in, instead of just having the DAO hold on to the the inventory, but being able to, um, yeah, but basically just like managing the the inventory, right? Yeah. So I guess the DAO, um, like we don't have that many. Well, we do have a, a number of high value assets, um, but then a lot of them are like any of them that are live. It's like the token, the vault token holders. Actually, it's like their those are their assets. Um, Sorry, what was your question? I got distracted. As you said, the in, the inventory that NFTX has are are the um are the supply and the holdings of the vaults themselves. So any any me bits that you see inside the NFTX um holdings, yes. yeah, actually are the ones that you guys minted in. I I would think so. So it's like whoever holds those vault tokens would would have ownership of those, right? Um. um. How many uh, how many me bits are in? I think in there are three. Right I think there are three yeah. me bits, and yes, uh, I believe you're correct, Alex. Yeah, so it's like yeah, those the me bit to vault token holders. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think it's something the DAO is going to be able to scale uh, to remain competitive on that front. Like sooner or later, the NFT space will just get too big, um, yeah, and it'll be will be too slow. Uh, but but it's definitely you know we have to be competitive. I think it's just about working it into the protocol. Yeah, is the is the default pairing um, eventually going to be with the NFTX coin or with F? Okay, so it'll by default in the interface, um, like when you're setting up a vault, it'll go with NFTX, uh, but you'll be able to set it to Ether instead if you want. And I think we're gonna be we're gonna have it so the if you set it to NFTX, then the DAO takes a smaller portion of the mm. of the fees. Um, okay. So it's kind of like a trade-off that way. So for people yep. that pref yep. are okay with NFTX, yeah, it's, it's just better that way. Cool. cool. Thanks for answering all, all my random questions. Uh, I, no I was going to say, I mean, that's what the call is here for. And I think it, yeah. it helps other people. If people like had this question, but like didn't have the confidence or like the information to be able to ask them here, well, mm -hmm. thanks to you, some people will now have their answers because we we can't like know what people want all the time. It's it's <laughs> it's yeah, a very difficult yeah, thing. Yep. All cool. right, I think that um, that covers everything. Yeah. All right, thank you to for participating in this call.
And uh, oh, that'll be it. Guys. Ending the recording here. Yeah. All right, cool.